Hey, Serenity, did you take a little vacation without bothering to let anyone know? Or are you just too scatterbrained to remember what you're supposed to do today? I'm well aware of what day it is today, but honestly, I just don't feel like doing it anymore. It's as simple as that. Did you just have the audacity to talk back to me? I didn't raise you to be this big so you could defy me, understand? Today happens to be Sunday, and I know you're hiding away in your room upstairs. So get your sorry self down here immediately. You are coming with me to the car wash, whether you like it or not. Dad, I have to be honest. It's really embarrassing for me to dig through the vacuum bin every time. Why is it always me who has to do this gross task? I'm a grown adult now, about to start college. You can't keep assigning me these weird chores. It's not weird. It's a treasure hunt. Haven't you been paying attention? We've found earphones, spare change, and even valuable jewelry in that vacuum bin. Remember that time we stumbled upon a pair of pricey earrings that we sold for a cool $2,000? So, if you've finally been reminded of how important this job is, I suggest you stop being lazy and get off your butt to handle your responsibilities. Chop, chop. Dad, seriously? Don't you think it's a bit unfair to always put these tasks on me? I've been digging through trash since I was only five years old. And let's not forget how mom used to make me scout for forgotten toys in the park when I was a kid. But that's not all. You even forced me to go around the neighborhood asking for leftover food. A task I'm still stuck doing to this day. But Douglas never had to lift a finger for any of those dirty jobs. It's just not right, Dad. Oh, please. How dare you even compare yourself to my amazing Douglas? He's going to become a successful man, taking on all the responsibilities of this family. That's why he deserves special treatment, unlike you. Just look at yourself. You're nothing but a weak and useless girl. If you want to keep being fed and living under this roof, then you better do everything I tell you to. Got it? Don't even think about questioning me again. Dad, I've had enough. I'm not going to do any of those things you tell me to anymore. First of all, they're embarrassing. And secondly, I have a crucial SAT exam coming up that will decide whether I get into my dream college or not. I simply won't have the time to run errands and be your little minion anymore. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Spare me the delusions. You? Going to college? Ha 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 ha! Can't you see it's just a colossal waste of time and money? Look, I've raised you, provided for you, and given you a roof over your head for the past 16 years. And it wasn't so you could bury your head in textbooks for four more years. Let me make it crystal clear. There's no way in hell you're taking that stupid exam. Got it? It's high time you start working and earning actual money to support this household. It's only natural, isn't it? Kids grow up, leave the nest, and pay their parents back for all their hard work. What? Do you even have a clue how much effort and dedication I've put into studying for this exam? I've poured my heart and soul into it. I studied tirelessly, day and night. All for that moment when I can finally prove that my hard work pays off. And now you're telling me I can't do it? What's your problem? Why does Douglas get to go to college while I'm left behind? Again with this nonsense. I thought I made it perfectly clear that Douglas is a million times better than you in every way imaginable. He's the only hope for our family to escape the clutches of poverty. So naturally, it makes sense for me to invest all my resources in him, doesn't it? It's just common sense, really. You know what? Instead of putting all your hopes on Douglas to magically save our family from poverty, why don't you take a moment to reflect on your own actions? Remember all those years you spent at home, doing nothing but drinking and hanging out with friends? As far as I know... You've practically been freeloading off Aunt Sydney for over three years. Don't you have any shame at all? 
Look at you, trying to lecture me like you have any authority. Who do you think you are? Sydney is my sister, and she's making a fortune working abroad, so it's only fair that she helps out her little brother once in a while. All it takes is a little manipulation, some fake tears, and voila! She falls right into my trap. Nice try blaming everything on me, you insolent brat. You know what? No more warm water for you today. Go take a shower with a public faucet in the park or something. Consider it a life lesson for your audacious retorts toward me. Wait, what? But Dad, it's freezing outside. Taking a shower without warm water in this weather would be absolute torture. I'm glad you finally managed to figure that out all by yourself. <laughs> well, if it wasn't torturous to you, then this punishment would be utterly pointless, wouldn't it? Now, quit wasting time and get your lazy butt downstairs immediately. We're going on a treasure hunt at the car wash, whether you like it or not. Dad, where are you? Can you please come home right away? I can't open the door. What did you do with it? Please answer me, Dad. I'm running late. Hey, where do you think you're off to, huh? Well, um, I'm just heading over to a friend's house, that's all. Oh, going to a friend's house, huh? What a convenient excuse you've conjured up there. Do you really think you can lie to me like I'm some naive five-year-old? Don't even think for a second that I'm clueless about what you're up to. I've already reiterated a million times that you are absolutely not allowed to take that SAT test. But I guess it still hasn't managed to penetrate your thick skull, has it? But wait. How do you even know that I'm planning to go to the SAT test? Ha! Huh. I'm your father, so of course I know everything there is to know about you. Remember when you fell asleep on your desk while studying last night? That was the perfect chance for me to sneak in and turn off your alarm. Wait, what did you say? It was you who turned off my alarm and made me wake up late? Ha ha ha, you got it. It's all part of my master plan. I'm the genius behind it all. Pretty brilliant, huh? Oh, and by the way, I suppose you've already devoured the breakfast that Mom made for you, right? Um, yeah, what about it? Ha 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 ha! Everything went exactly as planned, just as I expected. You know, there was this loaf of bread sitting in the kitchen for a whopping two months, and it had mold all over it. It was honestly pretty gross. But here's the kicker. I convinced Mom not to throw it away just yet, because I had a brilliant idea for it. Now, I'm sure you can already guess what I used it for, right? Wait, hold on a second. You... you did what? You made me eat that kind of thing? How could you do something like that? Hold on a second, honey. I didn't make you do anything. You chose to eat the bread all by yourself. It was entirely your decision. Now, I'm just guessing when that diarrhea of yours will kick in. Ha ha ha! I bet it won't be long. So if you're already aware of the situation you're in, I suggest you give up on that college pipe dream of yours. It's the best decision for you to make right now, can't you see? Dad! How could you come up with such a wicked plan? I can't believe it! Why do you hate me so much? Is it because I'm a girl? You hate me because I'm a girl, don't you? If I'm such an unwanted child, why haven't you given me up for foster care already? Oh my god! Dad! Now my stomach is starting to hurt! Please, please come home and open the door for me. No can do. You see, your mother, brother, and I are having the time of our lives. We're dining at a fancy restaurant, going on a shopping spree at the mall, and we're even considering getting Douglas a new car as a reward for all his hard work. I'm not kidding around right now. 
My stomach is hurting really bad. I think I might have to go to the hospital. No, Serenity. Just be a good little girl and stay at home like Daddy says. Don't worry about that tiny stomach ache you have. Just take a nap or whatever, and it'll be gone when you wake up. Seriously, stop exaggerating and making a big deal out of nothing. It's just some moldy bread, not poison or anything. Besides, it would be a waste of my time and gasoline to come all the way back to the house just to open the door for you, right? But, Dad... I'm sure you'll get over it in no time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go back to enjoying my time with my precious son and wife. Oh, and just so you know, I'll be turning off my phone, so don't even think about trying to contact me and continue with your whining. What the hell, Serenity? Come back home right now. It's been a whole week since you took off from the house. What on earth do you think you're doing, young lady? Hi, Dad. Don't you dare say hi to me. You think you can just throw out a casual hi and all your sins will magically vanish? No freaking way that's ever going to happen. Do you even have a clue how furious your mom is right now? Tell me, where the hell were you for the past week, huh? Your mom and I were here waiting for you, consumed by worry that you can't even begin to comprehend. And... Why did you even bother worrying about me? Honestly, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, you do realize that you're the one who caused me to end up in the hospital in the first place, right? What are you talking about? I never... Oh, wait. You mean that incident when I mistakenly included some rotten bread in your meal? Come on, it wasn't that terrible, was it? It's just bread. How much harm could it really cause, right? Yeah, except for the fact that I ended up with a nasty case of food poisoning and had to stay in the hospital for a whole week. You should consider yourself lucky that a neighbor helped me and got me to the hospital in time. Otherwise, you'd probably be mourning over my dead body right now. Oh, come on. You're such a drama queen. The fact is, you're alive and well, aren't you? So what's stopping you from coming back home? Your mom and I have been missing you like crazy. Our house just isn't the same without you. Everything has been a total mess during the whole week you were away. Hmm, I see. Do you miss me? Or do you actually miss the thrill of bossing me around and making me do your every whim? I bet it must feel quite strange to handle all the chores around the house all by yourself, huh? Because, let's be real. You've never really seen me as your child throughout my entire life. In your eyes, I'm just a tool you keep around for your own benefit. As for Douglas, he's the true hero of this family, right? Well, well, well. Look who's got a mouth on them. You're gone from our house for just one week, and now you're all full of attitude? That's quite unexpected. Don't even think for a second that you can act all superior just because I show you a bit of care. Spare me the sob story and get your bratty self back here. Come back so I can teach you how to be a good daughter again. Um, the answer is no. I mean, seriously. Do you think I'm dumb enough to willingly return to that messed up family dynamic? Do you think I'm a fool who would let you continue to use and mistreat me? I've learned my lesson, and I now realize that no matter what I do, you'll never truly accept me as your daughter. That's why I stopped caring. And let me tell you, for the first time in my life, I feel liberated. It's like a massive weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You know that feeling? Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. What in the world are you blabbering about? You're saying you're never coming back to this house. Like... Ever. So, where exactly do you plan on staying, huh? It's not like you have a single penny to your name. <laughs> you know I always manage to snatch up every dollar you make from those side gigs, no matter how hard you try to hide them from me. But hey, 
Don't blame me. I just have a knack for sniffing out money, that's all. <laughs> oh, trust me. You're not the one who should be concerned. I'm actually staying at Aunt Sydney's place as we speak. Wait, what? Aunt Sydney's place? What in the world are you talking about? Wasn't she supposed to be working abroad right now? How on earth can you be at her place? Well, it's actually pretty easy to grasp, to be honest. I sent her an SOS message, and she rushed back to help me out. Excuse me? So you went ahead and talked trash about me to her, huh? And how did you even get her number? I don't recall ever giving it to you. Well, welcome to the age of the internet. In case you forgot about that. It only took me a few minutes to find her Facebook account, you know. Actually, we've been in touch for quite some time now. And I've been keeping her updated on my life. When I shared with her how you've been manipulating and controlling me, she was furious. She even took the time to wrap things up with her work abroad so she could come back to the States and have a serious chat with her dear brother. Wh what? Wh why? What does she even want to talk about, huh? I have nothing to discuss with her. So just tell her to get back to work. We're all good here. Oh, hate to burst your bubble, but she's not returning there anymore. She's here to stay. Actually... She's already landed a new job that she adores, and she intends to work here until retirement. She also mentioned that all those years working abroad made her really miss our lovely country. Plus, she's been missing spending time with me, her favorite niece. And now that she's fully aware of how terribly you've been treating me, she's decided to take matters into her own hands and have a little heart to heart with you. So get ready for that. Oh, this is absolute nonsense. How dare you go and badmouth me to her, you treacherous scoundrel. I can't believe you would sink so low and pull such a stunt on your own father. Oh, it's nothing new, really. Just the same old stories about how you made me rummage through the garbage or take showers at the park. And oh, let's not forget that delightful incident where you purposefully locked me in my room and tricks me into eating spoiled bread. Yep, Sydney's heard it all. And let me tell you, she won't let you off the hook. Not even in your wildest dreams. Ugh, you've got to be kidding me. You know what kind of person Sydney is, right? She's the type who would go to the ends of the earth to set things right. Oh my goodness, I'm so utterly doomed. And of course... She'll demand that you pay her back every last cent you borrowed from her. Sydney is such a magnanimous soul. She's been onto your little money swindling game for ages. With all those pathetic excuses about car repairs, economic downturns, inflation, and all that crap. But she tolerated it all because she knew that if she didn't give you the cash you wanted, you'd just unleash your wrath on me and dump all the responsibilities on my shoulders. Are you kidding me? There's no way what you're saying is true. I hope. Do you want confirmation from Aunt Sydney? I can let you talk on the phone with her. In fact, she's been itching to have a conversation with you this whole time. Oh my goodness. Can you even fathom how much she's been biting her tongue, waiting until she can say it straight to your face? Jeez. It must be as long as war and peace or something. Ha! <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Just tell Sydney to scram. I'm done with her. Like, seriously, I don't want any part of her in my life anymore. Actually, I don't even know who the heck she is. Well, suit yourself, Dad. But let me warn you, even if you think you can dodge her now... Sydney will definitely make an appearance at our doorstep next time. Ready to have a face-to-face -face confrontation. Sydney, she's a thoughtful woman. Before she handed over the money, she made you sign some papers as proof that you borrowed it from her. And trust me, the total amount is far from a laughing matter. It's serious enough to land you in jail if you fail to pay her back. So yeah, brace yourself. 
because you'll be hearing from her lawyer. Just thought you should know, Dad. Whoa, hold up. Jail? What on earth are you even saying? This is not funny anymore. You need to make her stop, like ASAP. I've got a wife and a son to look after. Going to jail is just not an option for me. Oh, really? Last time I checked, you were practically living off Sydney's paycheck. Too lazy to bother finding a job for yourself. And now you're using the excuse of taking care of mom and me to avoid going to jail? Give me a break. How ridiculous of you. Well, I've made up my mind. I'll be moving in with Aunt Sydney from now on, Dad. So don't worry. You won't have to stress about me anymore. I'll be perfectly fine on my own. Hey, Serenity. Are you around? Oh my gosh, you won't believe the crazy thing that just went down. I'm telling you the truth. Sydney, she lost it. Like, totally went bonkers. Hey there, Dad. Hmm. Did my oh-so-awesome aunt manage to ruffle your feathers? I had a feeling she might pull something big. But I'm dying to know what she did to freak you out. <laughs> I mean, I did try to tell her to take it easy on you. But knowing her, I doubt she could hold back. She just can't help herself, honestly. She really went off the deep end or something. She made me wear this ridiculous sign that said, I'm a cheapskate and a terrible dad. Don't follow my lead. Can you believe it? And as if that wasn't enough, she forced me to parade around the streets with that humiliating thing hanging around my neck. To top it off, it was freezing cold outside, and she didn't even let me wear proper shoes. All I had was some PJs and a pair of sandals. Can you imagine? She claimed it was payback for making you take a shower with that public faucet at the park. You know what, Dad? I almost feel sorry for you. Almost. <laughs> Gotta give it to Aunt Sydney, though. She's a pro at dishing out those creative punishments for people who really need a reality check. Oh boy, does she have your number. Sydney knows you've always been a self-centered brat since we were little tykes. She's well aware of how unfair it was that you got all the love and attention from our grandparents while she got the short end of the stick. That's why she's dead set on shaping you into a better person. But of course, you never took her advice, did you? Who does that woman think she is? No matter what she pulls off, she never managed to become my parents' favorite. She's been living in my shadow all her life. Are you daydreaming or what? Let me set the record straight. Sydney never, ever lived under your shadow. In fact, she's always been leaps and bounds ahead of you in every aspect. No competition. She's got it all going on. She's smarter, more talented, and just plain better than you in every way possible. From academics to sports, she's always been at the top of her game. So, sorry to burst your bubble, but you've got it all twisted, Dad. All right, all right, I get it. But let's focus on what's really important here, okay? Right now, I'm stuck all alone at home, feeling all woozy after walking for a freaking four hours in the freezing cold, wearing nothing but my PJs and sandals. To make matters worse, Douglas and Mom decided to take off for who knows what, and they even took my credit card with them. I tried to convince them to come home and take care of me, but they straight up shut me down, saying it would just be a waste of gas to come back. And as if that wasn't enough, they had the audacity to tell me it's just a minor fever and all I need is a good nap to make it all go away. Can you believe the nerve of these people? Hmm, does that ring a bell for you? Because it sure does for me. <laughs> I'm being dead serious, Serenity. Right now, I'm completely alone and feeling helpless. Could you please, please come over and take care of your dear old dad? I really need someone by my side. Hmm. Let me give it a good think. 
The answer is a big fat nope. Sorry, dad, but I won't be rushing to your rescue. Maybe you should try calling an ambulance or something. Just a thought. Are you kidding me? I can't afford to waste money on that kind of nonsense. Plus, why should I spend money when I have an amazing daughter like you who I can rely on? Please, Serenity, can you find it in your heart to come and help me out? Your dear father is in desperate need of your assistance. Oh, look at that. When things get tough, suddenly you remember you have a daughter. How convenient, right? Well, guess what? News flash for you? I don't consider you my father anymore. So, ta-ta. I'm out of here. You're on your own. Either you call an ambulance, or just sit there at home and enjoy your little self-inflicted misery until someone decides to rescue you. As for me, I'm done with you. Despite having a severe fever, my dad stubbornly refused to call an ambulance, claiming it was too expensive. Instead, he waited patiently until my mom and brother returned home and drove him to the hospital in their car. Unfortunately, their car was on its last legs since it was an old, cheap purchase made by my dad. To make matters worse, while my mom was driving him to the hospital, the car suddenly gave out. Afterward, they had to shell out money for a taxi to get my dad to the hospital, which of course, didn't set well with my dad. You know how tight-fisted he is with every penny. Ha! Huh. Fortunately, my dad was admitted to the hospital in time and made a swift recovery. However, he was left with a hefty debt as a result. With no other choice, he had to start searching for a new job. Luckily, Aunt Sydney came to the rescue and helped him secure a position at her company so she could keep an eye on him and ensure he doesn't disrupt my personal life anymore. For the time being, I'm staying with Aunt Sydney until I find a new place of my own. It's been an incredible experience as we travel and explore new things together. Oh, and guess what? I retook the SATs and finally got accepted to my dream college. I'll always be grateful to Aunt Sydney for her support. To me, she's more than family. She's a true ally.